Okay, so have you completed your challenges yet? In this video, we will take a look at how to perform the challenges from the previous video. Okay, so this is what we have. So the first challenge is to make it bounce this way. And that's easy if we just take this keyframe, not just, just this one. Um, and I'm going to control H to hide those handles again and press G to grab this and press Y so it just goes up and down and I'm just going to start pulling this down because here's the zero line right here and we can grab this and pull this down into the negatives. Just like that we're pulling the value down into the negatives which makes it go the opposite way. You can see over in the value it's negative 10 and to make it easy we can just type in negative 14 here or whatever you choose and now all of a sudden it goes the opposite direction. So that was pretty easy, right? That was the easy challenge. And now the intermediate challenge where you make it go forward and backwards on the Y axis. So let's stop this, go back to frame one. And the easiest way to do this is to come over here to the X location, the yellow field here, right click and choose clear single keyframes. And now you can see we've gotten rid of our X location on the animation graph. So on frame one, let's go ahead and add a keyframe on the Y location because that is the axis we want to affect. This should be zero. And then let's move the playhead over to frame 43 because that is where the Z location, we have that final bounce or final resting spot for the ball. And so let's put this where we want it to. Let's just do 14 on the positive 14. That doesn't change anything because I forgot to put a keyframe. So let's go back and put a keyframe here on 43, 14 and keyframe. There we go. And now if we select our Y location in the graph, you can see our Y curve. So we have a positive 14, which means it's going back in 3D space, which is positive on the 3D grid. So looking at it from the front like this, it goes backwards. And then of course, just like we did before, we can change this to bounce forwards by changing the value to a negative value. And now I will show you the final advanced challenge to make the ball bounce diagonally. So like I said, we're going to need two axes for this. So we're going to need both the X and the Y axis. So on frame one, I'm going to add a keyframe at zero on the X axis as well. So first let's move the ball up in this direction. So that is going to be the positive Y and the positive X together. So right now we have our Y value in the negative. So let's change this to a positive 14. So that's going on the positive Y, which goes to the back in our 3D view. And then at 43, we also want the X location to be at 14 as well. It doesn't have to be 14, but to make it go exactly diagonal, I'm going to match the Y location, make a keyframe there. And now we have something that looks like this. The ball is now bouncing diagonally because it is going both positive Y back and positive X to the right. So it's going to the right back in our 3D view. And if you look at our graph, you can't actually see the X location curve. Uh, because it's behind the Y location curve, which are the exact same values. So the curve is exactly the same for both of them. But you can't see both of them at the same time because they're overlapping. Okay, so now instead of going back and right, let's go make it go back and left. So because it's still going back, it's still going to be positive Y, so we don't need to change that. All we need to change is the X, and we need to change that keyframe from positive to negative to switch the direction. So let's make sure we have that keyframe on frame 43 selected and active, and then come over to the value and change it to a negative 14. And now it's going to bounce the opposite direction on the X, but maintain the same direction on the Y, which makes it go back and left. And now we can see both the X and the Y curves at the same time. Okay, so let's keep going. We're gonna keep going counterclockwise here. So let's go front and left. So we're already going left, which is our X axis, and that's the negative on the X. So we don't need to change that. All we need to change now is the Y. So because it's positive, we're gonna change that to negative, which will make it go forward. 
and to the left. And there you go. And that is exactly what we would expect. Okay, so we have one more to do, and I'm sure you can guess. <laughs> uh, we want it to go front and right this time, so that means we need to change the X location from negative to positive. And there's nothing over here because there's no active keyframe yet, so let's select this keyframe and change this to a positive 14. And now we are going a negative Y, which is to the front, and a positive X, which is to the right, and that's going front right. And now if we unhide our plane, we can select our plane, press S to scale, and then move our mouse to scale that up however much you want. And now it looks like the ball is bouncing on the floor instead of just in space. And this is what we have. And now we can unhide the Z scale and location so we can see all of our curves. And this is what it looks like. So we have all four of these curves working together for us to make the ball bounce and squish and move in a particular direction. So the Z location here is what makes the ball bounce up and down. The Z scale is this one, which makes the ball squish. And then you have the Y and the X location, which makes the ball move in a particular direction. And they all work together, making the ball look like it's bouncing in 3D space. Now, if you wanted to, while you're animating, you can come over here and press these lock buttons to lock the curves. That way you can't select them or accidentally move them. If you still want to see them on the screen, but you don't want to accidentally move them, this is a good way to do that. And then you can just unlock one of them and then adjust one of them without accidentally bumping or nudging anything else. You can also click the middle checkbox buttons here to define the influence that it has. So we can turn on or off the influence of the curve. So right now I've unchecked the Z location, which is the up and down motion of the ball. So now you can see it's just rolling and squishing, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But this is something you can do while you're animating to test if you want to see what it looks like without a certain parameter. And I can do the same thing with the Z scale. So this is our squish. So now it's just rolling. And then our Y location. So now it's just going rolling to the right. Or it's not even rolling. We're not, it's not rotating at all. It's just moving. It's just sliding. And then we can uncheck the X location. And none of them are active. So it doesn't do anything. But you can see it stops in the animation at the time wherever we decided to uncheck those boxes. So if you wanted it in a certain position, you would want to make sure you go to that keyframe and that position before you unchecked the box. And then we can enable these again, one by one. So Z location, that's just up and down. Y location, so that goes forward, but it doesn't squish. Z scale, now it squishes and X location, and you know the rest. So hopefully now after these exercises, you can start to see how animation curves work and how easy they are and how powerful they can be to change and manipulate your animation, the look and the feel, the personality, the character of whatever you're animating. But if you're like me, you're probably super bored already with a bouncing ball and you want to move on to more exciting things to animate. And of course, I would agree with you. So let's see if we can use the animation skills that we've developed so far to animate something a little bit more interesting.